You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You know, we usually do, right? After a win and after a SEC win as Arkansas took care of business against Mississippi State at home 31 to 28, which ended up being a thrilling game to the very end. Uh, frustrating at times, awesome at times, annoying at times. It just, just, it was awesome though, because at the end of the day, you get the win. Who cares about all of the stuff that happened during the game? As long as you get the win, that's all that matters in the end. And now the year Arkansas Razorbacks are officially bowl eligible for the first time since 2016. Six wins sitting at six and three with three conference games left on the schedule and more opportunities to increase their bowl bid. Hoping for the Florida Bowl. We'll see. But what a game. And it was uh, one that, you know, if you look at the box score, it doesn't really indicate the final score. Like, think about this. K.J. Jefferson goes 19 of 23, very efficient, for 191 yards and a touchdown. No picks. Which is, I mean, obviously you'll take it. But it's not like he set the world on fire with his numbers like we've seen him do in previous games. Even in the rushing attack, Dominic Johnson, beast mode. That dude was awesome. Like, I love seeing him run, and I'm glad he's gotten a lot more carries. Uh, 17 carries for 107 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, he had a great game, 100 yards. Doesn't happen all the time. But besides that, Traylon Burks was your third leading rusher with 39 yards. So didn't set the world on fire in that regard. But Arkansas won, especially when you start looking at Will Rogers and the quarterback for Mississippi State. 36 of 48 for 417 yards and four touchdowns. Only one interception. You're like, if you see those numbers, you're kind of like, ooh, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Mississippi State probably won this game. Because you would think that the air raid that Mississippi State has and that they run it was, was that effective where he throws for over 400 yards and gets, over four, and gets four touchdowns. That's going to be good enough to beat most teams especially when Arkansas didn't have one player necessarily that just blew it up offensively. But that's not what happened. Arkansas gets the victory, and it came down to the fourth quarter where Arkansas outscored Mississippi State 15-14 to because, of course, they converted that two-point conversion play to increase the lead to three, and a missed field goal at the end of the game. Actually, not just at the end of the game, but throughout the entire game, missed field goals plagued Mississippi State and made field goals made Arkansas – uh, be in the position to win. Now, I know that we can look at all the stats and everything, but let's be honest. That's what won Arkansas the game, was that Mississippi State goes 0 of 3 from field goal range. Brandon Ruiz went 0 of 2. He started the game and missed his first two. Nolan McCord then has to come in, and who hadn't kicked all day, he had to come in and try to kick the game-winning field goal, and he missed it left. Now, they made all their extra points, but went 0 of 3 field goals. Cam Little goes 3 of 4, his longest being a 51-yard field goal. Uh, the one he missed was actually his shortest one, which is kind of funny, but still, uh, it ended up still being okay with Arkansas, and that's what it came down to in the end. Like, you know, J.J. Jefferson played great. Traylon Burks is still a beast. Like, Dominic Johnson played good too, but it came simply down to who made field goals. It, to put it another way, Arkansas's special teams won this game. Let me repeat that just in case you didn't hear me. Arkansas's special teams won this game. When it came down to it, it was a dead heat, dead even. Both offenses were scoring touchdowns. Both offenses were being effective. It was a back and forth, just prize fight that kept punching each other but at the end of the day the difference between the winning and losing team was that Arkansas made their field goals and Mississippi State missed their field goals in this game great in college football great we're gonna come down to just something as simple as that where Arkansas at a position and in a group that they've struggled with for years and even this season and special teams that ends up being the difference and you're going to take it all day long. 
especially in the fact that you now have a two-game winning streak against an SEC opponent, an SEC West opponent, I should say, which, I mean, that hasn't happened very often. And Mississippi State is now that team. They're 0-2. Mike Leach is 0-2 against the Arkansas Razorbacks this year. And it feels so good to see Arkansas now sitting at 2-3 and three in conference play, uh, moving up the ranks, trying to get a little more room in the SEC West, especially the fact that uh, LSU, their next opponent, which we'll talk about, is sitting at 2-4 and four right behind them. Mississippi State's at 3-3. Three and three, Ole Miss is at 3-2. and two, Auburn's at 3-2. and two, And A&M's at 4-2. and two. So there is a lot of maneuverability right there where if Arkansas can beat LSU this weekend, you know, it's going to probably put them up there now in the mix for possibly finishing third in the SEC West, which who did the who pick that? I forgot. I think it was me. I'm not saying it will happen, but they're at least in that position. They're at least in a way to where if they beat LSU and they beat Missouri, which is a very possible thing, uh, they could find themselves right there in the mix. So, but going back to this game, I can't tell you how awesome it is to have a group of football players that have been able to turn this thing around so quickly with a coaching staff that's believed in them to where even if it's not like pretty in the way they do it, they still get it done. Like Arkansas is not a good looking team. And, and I mean it by this is that they're not the most talented. Like they don't have a plethora of NFL draft picks on this team, like maybe a handful they're not the most disciplined team because they continue to get penalized like crazy. 11 penalties in this game for 84 yards. An insane amount. So they're not always the most disciplined team. They're not the most flashy team where you can count on one particular player, maybe besides Traylon Burks, going out there and just balling out. like And just looking good doing it. A highly explosive offense that's just going to score it well on teams. Like, they're not always the flashiest. And honestly, they're not always the most consistent. Some drives, they'll look like an all-world team, and other drives, they look like they don't even know what they're doing. There'll be times where they know they don't know who needs to be out on the field at the right times. There'll be times where one week, they'll look like a top 10, top 15 team, and the next week, they'll look like they don't even know what they're doing in the SEC. Like, you see all these things, and it continues to build up that way. But the point is, is that at the end of the day, regardless of how they look or how consistent they are or whatnot, they are good enough to win. They are a team that is doing the right things, that is good, making, making them good enough to win. And that's all we want, right? Who cares how Arkansas got to be 6-3? and three? They're 6-3. and three. And if we all would have said, hey, through the first nine games of the season, Arkansas is going to be 6-3, and three, we are all signing up for that always, immediately, no questions asked. I mean, to me, it makes the most sense. And it's going great right now. And that was a great win for Arkansas, especially given the fact of how they had to claw and tooth and nail try to get to that point. But it feels so good to have Arkansas back on the winning track and winning another SEC game as they have three more opportunities to do so. College football fanatics, I know you've heard of prize picks. We talk about it. It's the daily fantasy made easy. I love it, and you'll know you'll love it too. Because let's be honest, when you hear prize picks, you know they're the leader in college daily sports fantasy, and they offer more college football props than anyone else in the world. And the best thing about it is that we're giving you a deal here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. If you go to their website or to their app, it doesn't matter because it's all very easy to use. Use promo code Locked On, and you'll receive a 100% instant deposit up to $100. Again, award-winning app on both the App Store or Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Price Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawal. So don't hesitate. Go to prizepicks.com and use promo code Locked On, or go to your App Store and download the app today. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, so looking at a lot of specific things of this uh, Arkansas-Mississippi State game, one of the things that, of course, we talked about, you know, some particular players in the first segment, but I, I want to give shout-out to three different players in particular, you know, because, again, you, you can talk about a bunch of different guys, but three players in particular. First off, I want to give a shout-out to Cam Little, the, the obvious one. He's a true freshman. 
He's missed kicks this year, sure. He has not been perfect this year. But the fact is, is that he was the difference in you winning this game. Like, he's the one that won you this game, essentially. And this year, he's 14 of 18. He's 14 of 18, all right? That's pretty good for a true freshman. And here's the other thing, too. On the season, he is 5 of 6 from 40 to 49 yards, which is usually the most common place you're going to have uh, to kick field goals. He's 5 of 6, true freshman. And because of him being so successful this year and because of him going 3 of 4 in this game in particular, you won this game. So huge shout-out to Cam Little being a guy that can make some kicks. Again, he's not perfect on the year, but he's made some kicks. He's made some big-time plays, and he was the difference in this game. Another player I want to give a shout-out to, of course, is Traylon Burks. I mean, I'm going to hate not seeing him in a Razor Rec uniform this year or next year. The dude is just so good. Like, I, I know we keep talking about how good he's been and how awesome he's looked not only this year, but since he's been at Arkansas and, you know, he's just got the whole package. He's big, he's physical, he's fast. Like he's got all the things, all the makings for being a phenomenal NFL wide receiver. And he just does it all. And within, I guess it's going to be four players because I'm kind of comboing uh, the two uh, skill position players into one. But with Traylon Burks, he can do everything. He passed, he ran the ball, he caught the ball. I don't know if he would have gone out there and kicked, but maybe he could have if Cam Little could have, was hurt. But he just did it all. And kind of going to combo with him is Dominic Johnson. 17 carries, 170 yards. at 6.3 yards a carry. The dude has been looking good ever since he's arrived on campus. And we know that Dominic Johnson is a guy that has been kind of waiting in the wings. But when his opportunities have come, he's looked really good. He's 6'1", 235. And he has the ability to break open a, a long run if needs be. Like, and he got the ball. He got the rock because Sam Pittman was really trying to put emphasis on getting him the ball more. And he did awesome with it. 17 of 170 yards and two touchdowns. And, of course, had the two-point conversion there at the end of the game. I mean, that was just big time out of him. But the final player that I want to give a shout-out to is K.J. Jefferson. Now, if you look at his stats, if you look at his box score, 19 of 23, 191 yards and a touchdown. And then he only had 11 carries for 14 yards. Uh, so it wasn't like his best game of the year. That's not what I want to point out. What I want to point out is K.J. Jefferson's clutch playmaking. This is the second time this year where he is, his offense has gotten the ball late in a game. And has had an opportunity to go down the field and either tie the game or win the game. And he's done it. His offense has done it. Like, if you think about this, guys. Arkansas got the ball back with 222 left to go in the game. Down by five. Getting the ball at the 25-yard line. They got two minutes, roughly. To go downfield, get a touchdown. Not a field goal, because field goals doesn't do anything. A touchdown. And this dude did it. His offense did it. Got helped on that fourth and one penalty call, but it was the right call. <laughs> or makeup call from the other pass interference call. We won't get into that. Uh, but they, he did it. Once again. He did that against Ole Miss, too. Against Ole Miss, they had less than two minutes to go. They had to have a touchdown. And if they would, I think that if they would have run that Dominic Johnson play against Ole Miss for the two point conversion, they would have gotten it and they would have won. So you have a quarterback in KJ Jefferson that is not only talented, that not only is a threat, but he's a gamer. When the game is on the line, when all eyes are on him and his offense to go down the field and make a play, he puts together a drive, makes smart decisions. And gets it done. He was having check downs. Where he wasn't trying to force any throws. He was knowing when to run. And when to throw. And when to you know, throw it away. Like very smart play there. All these things coming into play. All because of KJ Jefferson. And his gamer status. Like I love this kid. Like I love, the, I love watching him play. I don't care if he's not going to have the numbers. Like some of the other Matt Corrals or whatnot. But I'll take this guy over any of those guys because 
This guy in KJ Jefferson proves to me that when the game's on the line, he wants the ball in his hands and he's going to get it done. That's the markings of the great of the great quarterbacks. Give me that over 400 yard games all day long, because those guys don't always come through in the clutch. Those guys don't always go downfield and get a big time score. This guy, KJ Jefferson, did that. So I'm a big KJ Jefferson guy, and I am so happy that Arkansas is going to get him at next year and maybe even another year after that. You got plenty of time with KJ Jefferson. If you haven't tried Bill Bar and I now, though, you are missing out. They say it's just a protein bar, but it does not taste like one. And I can attest to this. Listen, they send me these things, and it is no doubt about it. Like, I, I love them. I get them every single day for breakfast. I do different types of flavors. I try to get it right before the show. It gives me that extra boost of energy. And the best thing about it is they're low-carb, low-calorie, low-fat, low-sugar, but high in protein, which is exactly what you want when it comes to a protein bar. And they have different flavors to choose from. And they're also coming out with a limited time flavor every three to four days. So check their website off and you do not want to miss out. So go to BuiltBar.com, use promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off your next order using promo code LOCK15, again, at BuiltBar.com for 15% off, promo code LOCKED15. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. All right, so now that Arkansas is sitting at 6-3 and three on the season, they have their next big test in SEC play. Going down to Baton Rouge at night, Death Valley, against the LSU Tigers. So Arkansas opened up Vegas-wise as a three-point favorite in this game. That's just insane. What? Last time Arkansas played in Death Valley, they were like a 46-point underdog in 2019. Amazing how two years have just changed the entire landscape. Uh, but obviously, that I think that line is going to move to more towards LSU as the week goes on. In fact, it's already at a two-and-a-half-point favorite, uh, according to Vegas. So it's, it's moving. And even if you look at the ESPN matchup predictor FPI, uh, they have our LSU winning this 59% to 41% for Arkansas. So even though it looks like that, it's probably going to be a game where Arkansas is not going to be picked to win. Even though they're 6-3 and three, and LSU's 4-5, and five, the Hogs are not going to get picked to win this game. Now, LSU came off of a very, very tough battle against Alabama. Emotional battle. They only lost, and on the road, mind you, 20-14 to 14 to the Crimson Tide. Like, I would have never guessed that. But it was very emotional. And it was a tough tough go. And now LSU is sitting at a, in a way where they've lost four of their last five. Their only win, of course, going against Florida, which is such a weird thing within itself. Got a touchdown victory there. But uh, they lost to Auburn by five. Got smoked by Kentucky uh, on the road. They got beat by Ole Miss very handily. And now Alabama, of course, barely beat them. So now you have this weird thing where – I don't know, like there's nothing from the Arkansas-Mississippi State game that gives me more confidence or less confidence in Arkansas's chances to win this game. Like it, there's nothing to it. Like I, I don't have, like the Mississippi State game improved me. Oh, okay, because of that performance, I think Arkansas can win this one. No, it has nothing to do with that. But I do believe that we've seen it many times before that when LSU comes off of a game against Bama, they've usually played Arkansas. It happened in 2014. It happened in 2015 when Arkansas won those games. And I think that there's an element to that. And that's why I believe Arkansas is in a really good spot going on the road. Is that we know Ed Orgeron's not going to be there anymore. Uh, we know that the LSU fans are really disappointed with the 4-5 and five start. Uh, or I should say the 4-5 and five season so far. And I'm looking at ticket sales for that game. Uh, you can go to the game in Baton Rouge right now, according to uh, Vivid Seats, for $8. $8 for a night game in LSU. So I don't know what the crowd's going to be like. I'm sure it'll be loud in, in anyways. But still, this is where Arkansas can finally have their opportunity to beat LSU. To beat Ed Orgeron for the only time that he's been there at LSU. You should have beaten him last year, but you didn't. This is your best chance. And if you go down there and you get that victory, then you're really, really in good position. But the thing about LSU, though, is that they're really good. Their, their offense is solid, 
and but their defense is not good. Like it's so weird because they're you know how many points they score per game? Twenty eight. You know how many points they allow? Twenty eight. Essentially, it's like twenty eight point seven is what they score. Twenty seven point eight is what they give up. <laughs> so they're they're a team that's kind of just okay. You're right there in the middle. You're an average team. You're a five hundred team. And Arkansas needs. To, I think Arkansas will. I think they'll win. I do. I really do. Doesn't mean that they are going to play their best game, but I think that Arkansas is going to win this game. Get that boot back in Fayetteville, and we'll talk more about it as the week goes on, but that's what's the most important thing at this point in time. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily Arkansas Razorbacks podcast. 